Hello guys, so I'm Saranun Yuvaraja. So I'm doing PhD in uh, Professor Shihong Lee's group. So I'm mainly working on transistors, so like advanced technologies like fin transistors and also gate all around transistors. So I'm the trainer of the 4200 system in our lab. So this 4200 system and with probe station is like very advanced one that we have and it's multifunctional. So and so to give a brief overview, we have the probe station here, which has four probes, and then uh, we have the 4200 system here. So so we don't need to care about how we see the screen. We have already the PC, which gives us a complete display, and also we have the laptop through which you can see the sample. Uh, with the help of this, you can turn on the microscope, and we can see the observe the sample. Um, you can probe them with the help of focusing and everything. Then we can able to measure uh, many parameters. So first let me show you that we're going to place the sample in the probe station and we're going to see under the microscope. So we have here the adjustment. Oh, no problem. So here we can, we have two probes. Uh, this is for a demo. So we have like four probes and we can use and we can use all the four probes for measuring multiple parameters of a system of a device like three terminal, four terminal and two terminal devices. Now we're going to take a device which is two terminal. So where we have all the probes connected, we're going to place the sample now. So this is the sample. So this has this is a, this has some gold film, and it is a capacitor device, uh, which we made it on top of silicon substrate. So now we're gonna have, we're gonna place the probe now. So this is just a brief demo of placing the probe. So for advanced operation, what we're gonna do? So we have four probes here. Let me uh, go through the simple operation of this probe station. So we have this each probe is connected with like three important directional movements. First is Y axis the, and then we have X axis movement and then we have Z axis movement. So with the help of these three movements we can able to move the probes easily. So and then uh, we have Z axis probes here. So this is very important. This, this is the place where you gonna connect the cables. So for example if you need to measure the resistance or some electrical behaviors then we can able to use the cables like this so we're going to have the cables the cables with the black one is with the help of this we can measure able to measure the current the voltage and the resistance but we also have the another important functionality using this proposition is we can also measure the capacitance so it's not like a very simple capacitance. We can able to measure wide range of capacitance from few nanofarads to few picofarads. So, so uh, let me show you the cable for the capacitance. So this is the cable. So let me take it. And this is the cable that we generally use for capacitance. We can clearly see it has two cables with the help of a T connection. We connect it. And then with the help of the adapters. So basically without an adapter, so it will be like this. This is the actual cable. So with the help of the adapter, we can able to connect this cable. This is called a coax cable. They can connect this one to any of the adapters here. So so it's very flexible. And in our lab, we have many adapters, so we can easily use all the four probes for multiple purposes. So let me connect it here. So so this is the brief overview. So of using these probes and then we can able to move the probes with the help of the movements which I have shown and then with the help of the system we can able to see the sample so with the help of the microscope so you, with the help of this setup you can able to precisely move the sample down to 5 micrometer dimensions easily and you can able to probe the sample so this is how we gonna operate the probe station 
So if you have any doubts, you can contact me at any time so to get a uh, uh, few information about it. So next step is I'm going to show you how this 4000 system we have to operate it. So the 4000 system is very advanced. So and the software is very user friendly. We can able to easily access all the parameters what you need. So let me show you how to measure the resistance and then the capacitance of the device. So these are the two very basic parameters that everyone will be requiring to measure from any devices. So first is resistance. So I will give you a, a brief information about it. So here we have A and B slot. This refers to this is a two terminal device and then which we have different cables, different connections. And this 4000 system will give us like four outputs like we have like SMU1, SMU2, SMU3, SMU4. SMU means source measuring unit. So and then ground is the ground of the system and then CVH1 and CVL1 is capacitance. I will uh, go through these two options in the later stages. So for example if you have two parameters like SMU1 and SMU3 you connected for example and then you can able to have different options to select here. So the most common one that what we use in our lab is voltage bias. In general just apply one voltage and then sweep you have a different sweep conditions and then you can also have a list sweep which means you can enter the values here. So these are the three very basic parameters op operation modes that we are going to use and then if you choose any operations the other operation for sure it will be ground. So either you can choose common for common ground or else you can choose voltage bias and make it as zero. So both are same. So this is the overall concept of configuring the parameters. So once we configure the next step we know is analysis. So in analysis, so this is very crucial window where we gonna see the data and then we gonna save the data here. So for example if I am running some device and I am getting different data. Here why it is for different colors means because we have, we have chosen different options here. So we have run for different temperature before it is a previous experiment. And we can see for each experiment if you select it, if you deselect it will go away and if you select it, it will come back to the graph. That means you can choose whichever data you want and then for after choosing, after running the process, so we can save the data. So before saving there is something called graph settings, you guys can see. So this settings we have to check what exactly it is. So here we have many options here, where there are two important options, one is define graph that one is access properties. Only these two we will be using more frequently. So first let me go through the defined graph. So in this defined graph you can see there are multiple options here. So fundamentally we have only two uh, to be chosen either BI, BV or AI or AV. So we know in the in this configuration window we ca came to know that we have A and B. So we are going to choose here. Uh, I am going to give x axis as voltage and then y axis as current. So these two parameters I need to measure and I need to plot it here. This is the overall understanding about this window. So after selecting them like we can select it like deselect and then select like this. We can give ok. So after setting the graph there is another option called axis properties. So this one uh, we know that we already selected some parameters but we need to know what type of plot we need. Either you need auto scale or as log scale or as inverter scale or as absolute scale. Whatever we need we can choose them and accordingly the plot will come up. So this is the overview and we can have all axes as auto scale all like this we can choose. So this is the brief overview. So let me show you how to save the data. So we have to click save and this system can able to save two different formats. One is the excel sheet the other one is a graph. So you can choose the location wherever we need and we can click save all. It will save in the concerned destination. After save all we can click exit. So this is the understand this is how we have to use resistance parameters. Let me show you how to use capacitance very similar but only one change. I am going to show you in configure only two changes. Here we have CVH1 we have to choose where you are going to apply all the voltages here and then CVL1 where you are going to apply all the ground biases here. 
So, like in the resist like similar to resistance, here also we can see different operation modes, but very less. So, it is for capacitance. The only difference is the frequency. In DC, you do not need frequency, but for capacitance, you need to measure the frequency of the device. So, this one will give you a wide range of options starting from 1 kilohertz minimum to the maximum 10 megahertz. So, you can choose whatever frequency you need and we can be able to measure it. So, this is understanding and the same thing everything is same analyze, process, graph settings, save data everything is same. So, this is the brief understanding about how to use the 40 double zero system. So, now we have seen how to use the probe station and how to use the 40 double zero system. Next, we are going to see how to use the heating controller. So, for example, in your case, if for your research, you need you may need to test the device for different temperatures. So, if that is the case, then in our lab, we can able to vary the temperature from minus 196 degrees Celsius to plus 300 degrees Celsius. So, this is the wide range. It is not like only wide range and also you can specifically park the system to a specific temperature value. If you can able to measure it, it will be useful for uh, everyone's temperature related device researchers. So, if that is your re requirement, then you can see how I am controlling it and you can also use for your research. So, so this is the system, the heating controller. The heating controller has, so we have like 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 4 options. So, the heater, the LN means liquid nitrogen. So, and then we have temperature controller and then we have LN2 controller. So, this temperature controller we are going to set whatever temperature we need. So, if you need to measure your device above 25 degrees Celsius, for example, if I need to increase, this is the first button is to increase and you can choose which digit you want, either ones, tens, hundreds. You can choose whatever digits we need, then we can increase it like this. If you need to decrease, you can decrease like this. So, in your research, if you need to measure your device above 25 means, you just need to select some value above 25 and then this is the finish set value. Then, what you have to do, you have to turn on the heater. So, this is for above 25 degrees Celsius. So, what if below 25 degrees Celsius? Below 25 means below room temperature. So, below room temperature, we can go up to minus 196 degrees Celsius. So, for that, we have to turn on both heater and also LN2. So, what this LN2 will do? This LN2 will help the liquid nitrogen to flow in the chamber. So, this chamber will cool down and when it cools down, it will help the device to operate at low temperature. So, this is the brief overview. So, when you click on the LN2, this LN2 controller will turn on and you can see the values changing. You can changing and the set value is 2 this unit is in PSI. So, this is the brief overview. So, we need to show how the liquid addition will work in only in in person. So, that you can you guys can have control in person control and we can able to uh, use the system for your purpose. So, I hope everyone learned uh, the brief understanding about the whole system. So, all the best guys.